Rivaldo Fairweather and Eugene Asante just saved Auburn's football season. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Special reaction show. It's the morning after Daryl Daprich joining us on this Sunday morning. And it came where Auburn did everything they could possibly do to lose, yet they win 14 to 10. Thank goodness for Cal for not being able to make a kick. And also just the unwillingness of Cal for wanting to seal out the football game. But when you look at this, I think there's two heroes of the game, Daryl, one on each side of the football. We'll start with the tight end, Rivaldo Fairweather. On the drive that would eventually produce Auburn's go-ahead touchdown, Rivaldo Fairweather took over the game. It was a third and long where Auburn was in a situation where any time up to that point, anything longer than a third and sixth, seemed like you were climbing Mount Everest. It just wasn't going to happen. He reached down on an underthrown pass by Peyton Thorne, hauled it in, moved the chains, would later on that drive draw a defensive pass interference call, and then later would catch a fade uh, for a touchdown pass from Peyton Thorne. And really, after that moment, is kind of when it kind of felt like, okay, Auburn can win this despite uh, having a terrible, terrible game on offense. Everybody has been clamoring for Rivaldo Fairweather to get the ball. Didn't see it against UMass. Didn't see right. it early in this game. And we were just screaming, throw him the ball. And then when they finally do, it gets called back for ineligible receiver downfield. He picked up like 15. Unbelievable. Yeah. So let's, you know, to, to truly appreciate what he did on that drive is the two catches he made were phenomenal catches. So it wasn't just routine plays. Fairweather catches the ball and runs in for a touchdown. Right. The, the the back shoulder throw that was actually the back kneecap throw that he caught while his butt was on the ground and reached around a defender was a phenomenal play. And when people have an opportunity to go back and watch it, you'll really realize how special it was and kind of got lost in the moment. And then the fade, you know, it's, it's rare that you throw a tight end, a fade ball to the corner. It's usually a big, tall receiver or someone that, you know, got – very athletic and can jump and Fairweather can. He he went up and got that Zach just like he was a receiver. That looked like a wide receiver going up to get that ball in the back corner of the end zone. So credit him. Very athletic play. Yeah. And again, it's just rare that you throw a fade to a tight end like that out wide. Auburn did and and he made two spectacular, phenomenal plays to save that drive which in essence turned out to probably save the game. And then on the other side of the ball, Eugene Asante. He's been my guy for a long time, and he was incredible. I mean, the the, the camera would zoom in on his face. Daryl, he'd have this big old smile. You could tell how much fun he was having. I mean, really, the coming out party for Eugene Asante. Uh, according to Stat Broadcast, he was credited with 12 tackles, a sack. Nine of his 12 tackles were solo tackles, had a one and a, uh, one and a half tackles for a loss. Uh, he had a pass breakup, two quarterback hurries. I mean, he was everywhere. He was everywhere. It seemed like even when he wasn't getting things that showed up in the stat sheet, he was gobbling up blocks or taking on lead blockers so other teammates could shine. He set the edge multiple times. Eugene Asante was everywhere. We said it on the show throughout the, uh, this past week. Eugene Asante is linebacker one. Forget about anybody else on the roster. He was the best player on the field for a big chunk of the game Saturday night. Yeah, here's the thing. We were hoping that he was serviceable. A guy that can come in, back up the starter, give you some snaps. Yeah, he's I'm the just going to be... He is the guy. Let's just be frank. He's a problem for offenses. I mean, he has emerged as a very, very good. Now, I know it's only through two games, but through two games, like an all-SEC caliber type linebacker, through two games. Now, he's got a long way to go through right. the season, but he's more than just serviceable. He's a problem. He's a play wrecker. He is a leader on defense. He's a big play machine. He makes sacks. He makes hits. I mean, he is, and he's so fast sideline to sideline. We've been screaming that for weeks about Auburn finding a linebacker that can go sideline to sideline. So he is not only, you know, someone that's come in and, and gives you plays, he gives you impact drive changing plays. And that's exactly what Auburn needed from the linebacker spot. 
Yeah, so, I mean, those those guys were definitely the two heroes of the game. But let's call a spade a spade here, Daryl. This game should not have been as close as it was. The fact that Auburn won at all is a, is a blessing, which, I mean, Auburn isn't ever going to make anything easy. Boy, that was an understatement for Saturday night's action. But, man, I, I just... Auburn did not deserve to win Saturday night. And let's also be very clear, Cal is not good. They are not a good football team. And it started as bad as it possibly could. And Peyton Thorne in this offense didn't really get settled at all until that one drive in the fourth quarter. They're fortunate. That's all it took because Cal didn't want to score. I mean, the, the Cal offense took over in Auburn territory four times and they scored three points. Daryl, that's atrocious. That's bad. And props to Auburn's defense. That's great. But you can't do that again. You cannot do that again this season and expect to win. No, it, two things surprised me. Number one, as good as you know, the fact that Auburn's defense held Cal to, to 10 points just blows my mind. I mean, I never saw that coming. I also didn't see the absolute ineptitude and horrible play calling, play execution, formations, uh, substitution patterns. I mean, I, I hate to take shots, but I, I thought I was watching an offense for three or four years ago with no route tree, no imagination, no in, 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 you know innovation, and it was so frustrating because I felt like it's Auburn bad. has all these weapons, and they supposedly have a head coach that's an offensive playmaking, play caller genius, and it looks stale and familiar to Awful. what Auburn went through three or four, and that was – very frustrating. So, yeah, Cal's a bad football team. There's no doubt. I think that if Auburn would have played just average, just average, didn't turn it over as much as they did, didn't commit dumb penalties, Auburn wins that game by two scores at least. The fact is they played a probably as, as, as poor of an offensive football game that I've seen in years, even during the Gus years. And despite that, they go on the road and they beat a Power 5 team by four points. Now, what you can glean from that, we'll talk about later, but you want to learn and correct things by winning a football game rather than losing it. But there are a lot of things that were concerning and alarming and frustrating watching that game. It was old tapes, old reruns playing again. And that, to me, I expect so much more, so much more from this staff than that. It was very stale and very disappointing. It was bad. It was bad, no question about it. I, I want to I want to talk about how bad it was, Daryl, and how I don't want to say the word fluke, maybe blessing. How much of a blessing it was that Auburn was able to win on Saturday night. We'll discuss that in just a moment, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be a hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. They have all types of different screening options to make sure you find the potential candidate for your small business or any size business as quickly and efficiently as possible. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the, uh, the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job. Free terms and conditions apply. Daryl, when you look at every stat, every team related stat, Auburn lost in total yards to Cal 230 to 273. They lost passing yards 94 to 160. Neither very good there. Rushing yards, they did have the edge by like uh, 23, 136 to 113. Auburn had more penalties for more yardage. Auburn had less first downs. Um, Auburn was worse on fourth down. They, they were 0 for 1 on their fourth down play. And uh, Cal was 3 of 6 on fourth down, which is wild. That shows how much they wanted to win the game and be aggressive. Props to Cal for that mindset. But all of it was awful. It was all really, really bad. And then like time of possession um, was atrocious. 25 minutes to 34 minutes. Auburn had more turnovers. It's just, there was nothing about this that you could point and say, okay, Auburn was better at Cal than this. Other than the fact 
that Auburn's defense just stepped up when it needed to, and Cal made some really weird choices when they were deep in Auburn's territory. That That's really what it comes down to. There is nothing about this game that I predicted or projected that was right. So I'm, I mean, I, I don't, I'll yeah. wear that. I, I've got so many things wrong and missed so much about it that it's almost embarrassing with some of the pregame, t- you know, predictions and projections. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it just looked like a team, whatever team would make the la- <laughs> whatever team would quit shooting itself in the foot and quit making mistakes to kill themselves or would do it less would win the game. This game reminded me so much of the Missouri game last year, except it didn't go to overtime. I'm telling you, it was two last year was two bad football teams. It's like whoever doesn't continue to kill themselves on the field with stupid plays will win the game at the end of the day. And that's what it looked like. I tell me, I mean, it was just, there was no flow. I will say this Auburn made plays and had a big drive at the end of this game that they didn't, you know, against Missouri. Um, But other than that, it was just very stale and you're right. Both teams, both teams acted like they wanted to lose the game. Um, Yeah. The the, only difference was Auburn. The fumbling, yeah. The fumbling from Jarquez Hunter to Mari Austin is the more inexcusable part of it to me because I think the game develops a little different if Damari holds on to the ball. Seemed like Auburn kind of had some momentum for the first time in that game offensively. I think they at least get a field goal on that drive. If It's impossible to know, of course, but I think there's a chance the game develops differently if Damari holds on to that football. Um, maybe the offense has a little bit more confidence and they believe in themselves. Cause look, I think Peyton got in his own head a little bit. I don't, I think Peyton Thorne had to fight a little bit more of a mental battle than we all expected him to in this game. Um, so I, and I, I don't get that. I don't get that. Is that a Cal defensive schematic thing? I don't know. It's hard Surely to tell, not. but I will, but I will tell you this, their defense surprised me. So whether it is the fact that Auburn was so anemic yeah. and poor on offense or give a little bit of credit to Cal schematically. Now listen, Justin Wilcox, their head coach, is a very good defensive-minded coach. I mean, he sure. is. We can laugh. You know, I thought we were going to, you know, Auburn's going to gash Cal. But they did some things from a coverage standpoint that had Thorne looking like a deer in headlights. I, I could not believe that this was the same guy – that played well against Michigan, you know, Michigan and Ohio State against Cal, he looked really lost. That's concerning to me, but he got it together when he needed to on that last drive. Hopefully that'll springboard him. But I don't know. I just, you know, maybe Cal's defense, and we'll see it the rest of the year against some of these Pac-12 opponents. Maybe they'll be a little saltier than I thought, but maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I I don't feel good about it. Right. And and some of it early in the game. Like, okay, you want to be a little conservative to open things up just because you're so much better. Of a, you have so much better of a roster than Cal. You know, the the running with Jarquez on first and second down and then third down, you know, you convert or you don't, whatever. I was okay with that on the first one. You punt, whatever, or you should have punted. Peyton tried to do too much and, and fumbled, and thankfully that wasn't a touchdown. Auburn loses if that's called correctly. But the second drive, they were buried so deep in their territory. It's like, okay, they're going to be conservative here too because they don't want to turn the ball over. I got that. That's fine. Whatever. And that's when the outrage started. But I'm like, okay, I get where they're coming from there. Everything after that, (laughs) Daryl, everything after that, it's like, okay, what's the plan here? Like, what is Auburn trying to do on offense? And I don't think they know the answer to that question. Um, Between lack of game plan and then I think there's like a lack of purpose when they're doing the quarterback rotation that I I just don't know how you can send Robbie in and not know what the play is. That's a weird thing to me, but they always seem lost whenever they put Robbie in or vice versa. There was a time where Peyton would go back in. It's like, how are you putting a quarterback back in, especially when you're putting Robbie in there and you don't know what the play is. And you come out of a timeout, a commercial break, and you come out of that and have a false happen? start. I How mean, that, that that's that is so undisciplined and blank poor. You know what the adjective is there that I want to use? It's 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 unacceptable. It's what we saw in, in some of Gus's ineptitude when the offense just sputtered and it was just and you you there is no excuse for that. There's no excuse 
both times that the fumbles occurred by the running backs, you got a sense that Auburn was cooking with gas and was starting to take control of the game. When when Auburn was yeah. running, had what, like three minutes left, four minutes left, and Hunter fumbled on the 40, it looked like Auburn was about to put the game away up 14-10. And they, they fumbled and give Cal life that Damari Austin fumble. He we were Auburn was driving the ball, so yeah. that's the frustrating part for me. That the, the 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 no direction, the penalties off of dead balls, taking too long to get plays in, and having to waste two timeouts. Um, you you I'm I don't expect that with this coaching staff. That's unacceptable to have happen with this coaching staff. That kind of stuff is the stuff that's supposed to get cleaned up. And as Auburn fans, we shouldn't have to suffer and freaking watch anymore. Yeah. And yet it's still happening. We, we had it's to still watch happening. it. And I hope that there's people in the press conference that that ask the question and aren't afraid to go, what were we looking at? Why was it so inept? Why was it so unorganized? What are y'all doing as far as putting up? Call people out on the mat and ask the questions and make them answer it. Why yeah. is it taking so long to get plays in? Whose fault is that? People need to know and they need to get that cleaned up. You're not going to see that against Samford. It's not going to be a problem, but it will be when you get to the SEC. It will be, yeah, and, and that's the next test. Obviously, the next test is when you go to College Station in two weeks to take on Texas A&M, which that game seems more winnable than it did at the start of the not day. Not as daunting, not as daunting um, anymore. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the rest of the SEC kind of feels that way, which is which is a good thing, which is a good thing for sure. But I just, I do think there's some feeling that. Auburn fans are going to choose to overlook. And it's really a narrative <laughs> that Auburn fans wrote themselves. Going into the UMass game in the opener, every Auburn fan that I talked to was like, man, UMass is going to be better than we thought. And I'm like, no, they're not. UMass isn't a good football team. And then we did the same exact thing going into Cal. And I think some of the nation, national media kind of grabbed onto that too. College game day had more guys pick Cal, I believe, than they had to pick Auburn, which is fine. But this, this belief that Cal is this good football team and we've got to be careful. Well, we should have been careful. We weren't. <laughs> we weren't careful at all, and Auburn still won by four, right? So this, this whole narrative, Daryl, of, okay, well, Auburn survived. Well, heck, most Auburn fans thought we were going to lose on Saturday. So I, I do think some perspective is needed. When people just say, oh my gosh, that was so ugly. It's like, well, you still won. You still won. Never, ever, ever apologize for winning. Right. And I know it was ugly and I wanted to throw something through the wall. Um, but at the end of the day, you again, let, let's put this in perspective. Auburn played its worst football game in a very long time. Even in the Harson era, there were a couple, obviously, games with the heart, but just horrible, horrible football game against a lesser opponent. And it, despite that, one by four on the road uh, yeah. on the other coast. So you you try to just lessons learned with a W and and go okay. This doesn't look right. This was ugly. We shouldn't feel good about this other than it's a W. And let's find out what we need to to clean up. That's right. That's right. Okay. What does Auburn do moving on from here? We discuss that and other thoughts from Saturday night's game in just a moment. Right here. Unlocked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. If you did what I told you to do on FanDuel, you lost money. So my bad on that. My bad on that. But FanDuel is still the best place to wager on all of your sports action. Obviously, the NFL season kicking off this weekend with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 on FanDuel and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube. And YouTube TV, the collab that you didn't know that you needed, you need to check that out for sure. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Daryl, I think let's highlight a few other guys that stood out to us, and then we'll talk about kind of what's going to happen moving forward, we think, with the Auburn Tigers. Marcus Harris with maybe his best game as an Auburn Tiger. Marcus Harris was incredible on the defensive front. He really was. I mean, got some big plays early, uh, stops, tackles for losses. I think he was absolutely a, a spearheaded. Um, Donovan Kaufman, until he got dinged up late in the game, was playing really, really well, making some good tackles. I really liked the way Nixon and McLeod played too. Now, they yeah. weren't Asante, but they were good 
you know, as far as the amount of plays that they played and they were, they were productive and you could tell the difference with them getting more snaps. It seems to help. It seemed to help Auburn's uh, defense. So I was real high on, you know, a lot of guys from an offensive stamp or from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, Jay fair looked good on that crossing route and really Fairweather missed the block as much as we gave praise for Fairweather, though, let's be honest in the first Two quarters, he was not very good. He missed blocks. He whiffed on blocks. Um, not he a just strength, wasn't, though. That's yeah, not he why wasn't he's engaged. on the roster. True, I get it. But still, if you have an assignment, you need to. You need to. You need. You're that big. You need to make a block. He whiffed, and so I'm just saying. I'm glad he came back and and uh, you know redeemed himself. But Jay Fair on that crossing route, I, I don't think any other wide receiver played well at all. Everyone wants to blame blame Thorne on that ball that was a little bit high to hooks, but it hit his hand. Catch it. You make a one-handed catch in the back of the end zone in a scrimmage that's highlight that everyone's woo-wooing over. That's right. And you have a ball through two hands. Make the play. Make the play or at I'm least ready. get your hands on it. So that – but, you know, the running backs ran hard. Austin – now, I'll tell you who is a – look at the stats and look at a very underrated player – to come out of this game and gave Auburn a spark when he came off the bench. Look at what Jeremiah Cobb did. Had some nice runs, changed some momentum, flipped the field, and he would have had about 24 more yards had there not been a hold on that little backside reverse that he ran for about 22. So his stats would have been really impressive. I was I was very, you know, I, I was encouraged by what he brought from a momentum standpoint and how hard he ran the football tonight too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we all agree Auburn, especially offensively, was not ready and was not prepared for this game. What is your level of confidence? Because mine is not high currently. But what is your level of confidence that Auburn will be ready for the next challenge on this schedule, which is Texas A&M in two weeks? Mm, I'm right now. It's uh, incomplete. I, 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 I'm not going to be able to tell anything. From watching Samford, unless they get sloppy and don't put that team away early and look like a well-oiled machine, if that doesn't happen, then the level of concern is going to go up. Yeah. I just think that when you look across the SEC today, no one looked great except maybe Georgia. Um, Ole Miss struggled until they scored late against Tulane. Arkansas didn't blow anybody out. Um, we know what happened with Alabama and with Missouri struggled. Um, I don't, Texas A&M got beat by my. I, I just think that. There's a lot of teams today that some warts were exposed. But Auburn needs to worry about Auburn and worry, look inward and decide what they need to do. I think the one thing that I'm, I'm, I think is pretty ironic that I will say is that they didn't get caught up in all the swag and all the talk and all that happened. I think that I, I get a little confused when players like Ott run their mouth and and you know write a check that obviously their body didn't cash and sometimes that stuff comes back to bite you and it did mm -hmm. um your your co-host on the locked on the crossover uh spencer look he, he's a pack 10 guy i get it and uh i understand i don't have any problem with people talking up their conference or talking up their team what i do have a problem with is when they take shots to disparage the other team so you can be confident about yourself without taking shots like Ott did at Auburn and like, you know, your co-host did at Peyton Thorne. At the end of the day, it's a weird flex. When you've won four games last year, you begged to go into a conference that's across the country and take a 30% share of their TV money. You begged to do it. And then on top of that, you're in a conference that next year is going to have two schools in it. So you might want to pump the brakes and stay in your lane a little bit before you start calling out SEC players and SEC quarterbacks and that kind of thing and realize that, you know, it's just better to talk positively about yourself or realize what you are. I think that kind of stuff just comes back. It, it's it's mind-blowing to me is what it is. And, and again, at the end of the day, it comes back to haunt you. And it's good for Auburn for not engaging in that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I mean, that, that video was certainly shown to the, uh, to the team. Yeah. They use it as motivation. And look, early on, Ott would get the ball and the whole defense jumped on it. Oh, like they, 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 you know, they, 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 they knew. Jason Jones jumped the pile early. Did you see that? He came over the top. I thought he was going to get a flag. Actually. I was too. And, yeah. and then your video kind of spurred on and fired up some media members. So it kind of works both ways. You know, That's I, right. 
I get it. We we can talk about Auburn and be positive and without kind of disrespecting other teams. And I think that's a blueprint you don't want to go down because it always comes back to bite you. That's right. That's right. All right, we'll have thoughts on this game over the next few days. And then obviously we'll turn the page to Sanford and what can we what can we focus on um exactly like what that means. So um Daryl, in the meantime, how how can people check out everything that you've got uh going on? A lot of engagement on Twitter over the last 24 hours. Continue to do that. I will not tonight, but I will, or, you know, we'll tap 6410 and then Mondays and Tuesdays, various shows on the Auburn network. That's right. That's right. And um, did Alabama win? Was that a hook them horns right there? What's this? Oh, oh I, I'll, I'll put that up. My bad. I don't know where that came all right, from. All right. All right. All right. I got a little excited. The the hook them came out. My bad. My bad. See, I'm not going to uh, say no, anything because I just got done. Final question. No, Alabama did not win. I'm yeah, I, I won't because I just got through saying that I focus on Auburn. So I'll, I'll <laughs> I don't do want it. to look like a I don't want to look like a hypocrite, right? I'll I don't do want it. to come right back and say that. So I'll do it. Yep, Alabama yeah. lost. Yep, you hate to see it. Uh, you can read all of our written work at auburndaily.com, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow to recap this game even further. Uh, this has been Locked On Auburn.